Hi, I'm Sam. Um, I'm a, I, I suppose you say digital artist. I primarily um, work with like photo manipulation things and um, my whole goal is just to create things that are simplistic by nature, but speaks on a, 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 a level that we all can relate to. Really just make compelling music pieces like that. All right, you can go ahead. Oh, me. Uh, I guess the most appropriate thing to call me is a uh, short film director and screenwriter. Uh, I graduated from the University of Chicago uh, last, uh, you know, earlier this year in June with a degree in cinema and media studies and African-American studies. So I try my best to combine those two disciplines the best I can in my art. Hello, I am a curator. I am the curator of this exhibition. I also sometimes make art things with my hands. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. I am an Aya Butler. If anyone at the MCA is seeing this, I miss y'all. I work there. Um, but yeah, I'm a UIC student trying to study art history, trying to become a curator, trying to take over the world. That is all that is on the agenda. All right. So, um, well, first off, like, how are you guys? Like, how is everything given like the quarantine and the election shift and how everything's been going recently? Well, I'm, I'm you know, it's, it's a lot. I don't know everyone's had to deal with just a crazy, crazy year. But personally, you know, I'm hanging in there. It's going, everything's going pretty good. It's a shift. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on, um, I've been saying, on which side of the coin you're looking at lately. Because uh, some days are great, uh, other days are 2020. <laughs> but we're we here. So I'm going to just ride it out. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was just thinking, you know, some days are better than others, some days are worse than others. I think in times like this, it's important to uh, keep perspective. And just know that for however many bad days there are, there are good ones right around the corner. They're, they're yeah. coming back. Yeah. That, to build off of that, like, life kind of sucks sometimes, but overall, it's pretty great. Um, and that's the point of this. Yes, and that is the point <laughs> of this. Think of it this way. We got all this really amazing art out of a pandemic. And what more could you ask for? <laughs> what more could you ask for? All right. Well, it's good to know that you guys are doing okay, um, especially given the gigantic presidential shift we just had. Georgia flipped to blue. It's a good time. Shout Everyone's out to Atlanta. Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta. Flipping the blue. Um, we're not talking to Pennsylvania just yet or, or North Carolina. <laughs> we're not now. We don't need to talk to them. Um, so... Let's get into the actual fun part of this. Here we go. All right, one second. All right, give me a second. There we go. Sorry, I just had a massive brain fart. All right, what a good time. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna start you guys off with a really like loaded question. <laughs> Feel free to take as much time as you might need. Who are you as an artist? And you said, who am I as an artist? Was that your question? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I don't know. Well, as an artist, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm all about painting, but more so than the media that I use. I'm, I'm about, um, about the figure and a person. And I always find myself like no, thinking about how, my feelings and how I feel about a situation, how a situation can impact other. Like I find myself very in tune to how, how I feel like the emotional aspect of it, you know, like, yeah, we had the 
the pandemic and stuff like that. And we have artwork with people wearing masks and, you know, different stuff like that. But, you know, I'm thinking about like, um, I like to think about like, how did that affect people mentally? And like, uh, not only that, you know, the fact that we're still here and we're still going, I, I love to think about the resilience of people and no matter what the situation is. Um, so as an artist, I say, I'm, I try to just be encouraging and and um, and uh, you know, think and, and re- going going back to resilience. I always talk about that in my work, so that I want my work to be an encouragement to people. Can you tell us a little bit more about the work that you have in being Welcome to Humanity? Hi, Eddie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, like um, the work, one of the pieces that I have in there is called um, Calm Down Melancholy. It's a a full figure self-portrait of myself. And in the piece, she's um, she's sitting in this chair and about to get out the chair, but you know, she's still kind of holding on. And on her leg, she's holding a large uh, piece of fabric and the fabric turns into like a cut noose that's on her leg. And when I did that one, I'm thinking about uh, you know, there's a lot of times where you feel like there's something you want to do and something you could be really good at, but whatever mental block is keeping you from doing it, um, I'm trying, I'm saying, you know, encourage yourself to get over that mental block. The noose is cut because it's like, you know, stop that slave mentality. You can do whatever you want to do. So, yeah, that's one of the pieces I have in there. All right, real quick, let me just jump on over and give Eddie a chance to introduce himself. Hello. Hi. Did you want to introduce your art and maybe introduce yourself as an artist? Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. You want to give us like a little introduction to who you are as an artist and just tell us a little bit more about your practice. Yeah, um, all right, yeah, my name is uh, Eddie. Um, I've been doing art for like my whole life, uh, different types of art, you know, music, uh, painting, drawing, um, just different types of stuff. Um, yeah, you know, I always like to just create, I always like to do a lot of abstract stuff, nothing really too, I guess, formal, mostly self-taught. I've taken classes in school and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's just been uh, picking up as I go along. All right. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the work you have in the exhibition here at the Co-Prosperity Sphere? Yeah, those pieces were created last year. Um, it was, a, uh, I was going through a pretty rough time there.
Oh boy. Let's hope that never happens again. All right. Did it get disconnected? Yeah. Sorry about that. Hi, we're back. <laughs> um, so <laughs> if you want to pick up where you left off, sorry, the computer just decided to not Zoom. It opted to just not today, so that's fine. But if you could just pick up where you left off, that'd be great. Um, all right, we're talking about those p the pieces in the exhibit, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, those pieces I made during uh, last year, you know, just going through a breakup and stuff like that. So after, yeah, just, you know, I put a lot of feeling into those pieces. They really got me through a time where, you know, it was mostly to myself, uh, me and my son. And, yeah, it helped a lot, you know, making art getting back into it. I hadn't really uh, done a lot of canvases or oil or anything like that. So to start doing that and just really liking what I did was, it was really, I don't know, it was really therapeutic in a way. Okay, that sounds dope. Sounds nice. They're really nice, just beautiful abstract pieces. Um, Timothy, hello. Did you want to give us a nice rundown on the works that you have in our exhibition? Sure. So first and foremost, um, you almost have to understand that when I when I create things or like what I've what I've grown to learn to do that I really enjoy is um, just trying to like settle in on one emotion and try to capture that as with as much saturation that I possibly can that still feels realistic. Like, I don't want to jump into the realm of theater and dramatics or whatever. But regardless, with that said, um, while my practice comes from photography, as you can see with the second piece, it's the plain text. This, of, of anything that's in the gallery, it's the least technical, like, uh, for, like show of art. It's <laughs> literally Microsoft Word. But what's so special is literally just what it's saying and the, the the fourth dimension of time coming through like you know the red line or whatever like yeah, I'm 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 trying to speak something into it and that's why that um that piece the I am I am okay statement the whole the whole thing with that is so important for me just myself, um, just know I'm, I am good enough. Um, but with that said, like even all of my art, not just um, the two pieces there, it's always um, trying to capture form and expression and making that really fun. That's why that second piece is so uh, static almost in pose, it's very, like you have to stop and stand right in front of it and really feel what that is. And that's, at least that was the goal. <laughs> if that played out, we'll see. So. Accomplished it well. You did a really good job. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Hi. Uh, it's our turn now. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the uh, Who Am I as an artist, right? Yeah. All right. Um, that's, a, that's a big question. Okay, I feel like my art personifies who I am as a person. Uh, for context's sake, I am an extreme introvert. I spend a lot of time with myself. I spend a lot of time analyzing myself, one, like wondering why I do the things that I do. And then I guess like psychoanalyzing that, coming to different conclusions, just really studying myself as if I was some type of like subject. It sounds pretentious. I promise it's not. It's it's all in it's all in the name of like self improvement and you know betterment. Um, for further, I guess like in relation to our piece, for further context um, sake, uh, I'm dating the curator. Hi. <laughs> uh, how's that for networking? Yes. But uh, <laughs> so I know like when I was writing the script, I found myself you know calling back to the conversations that me and you have had um particularly in quarantine mm -hmm. and i just found myself okay how do i capture the flow of this dialogue how do i capture this emotion why is this character doing what they're doing right now and i would i would find myself i would ask myself why would i do the things that I, you know 
why would I say the things I say to you? Mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm like, I make a joke. The joke is with the explicit intention of defusing any type of like tension between us, which there, there can be sometimes. So I try to keep, you know, I try to keep things a little light by constantly making jokes, um, just like the uh, main character, you know, the uh, the male character in our in our script. So yeah, I, yeah, my art and who I am as an artist is very just self-reflective, very self-reflective, and just I guess putting myself into whatever I do. Yeah. Um, as for me, I as an artist, I'm a very chaotic person. I think that in general. My personality is just very chaotic and very all over the place. Um, so for the video piece for our for our project, um, I don't know. I just wanted to reverse that. I wanted to to take all the chaos that's in me and funnel it out and turn it into something calm. The poem that reads on the screen gets a little bit more chaotic the more that you try to think about who it's about, what it's about it's a cacophony of just thoughts and feelings that you could have about it. And that's how I feel every day. Um, most of the work that I make embodies chaos just because I've had struggles with anxiety and depression. And for at least as long as I can remember from the age of nine, I've just had a lot of things just running through my mind at any given time. And this was the best way for me to just let the things out one so for the images that accompany the script for our piece um there's still images from the funeral for my grandparents um that happened during quarantine that happened while we were in the middle of setting up the exhibition so they're all images from my house um they're all double exposed and they there's all this movement and um, it essentially just personifies what I felt in knowing that my grandparents were gone, that they, were, they weren't coming back. It was the final time. It was just an embodiment of the chaos I felt in that moment. It was very cathartic, as art usually is. Um, and to that point, you know, catharsis is a feeling that really only humans can experience. There's a lot of feelings we can only so I was a mushroom because this gets hectic. Um, but what does it mean to be human to you, Angie? Healthy transition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to me, what it means to be human is to is to have feelings and to be able to express yourself and and not only you know, be in tune with your feelings. Like it's okay to be happy here one day and then sad another, angry, you know, but also be, um, you know, em em empathic to other people's feelings, you know, and then not to be this, this like closed off, cold hearted, it, you know, thing, you know, to me about what makes us human is, is just all about it being in touch with our different emotions. You know, I feel like um, our our emotions and then the things that we're able to create ideas and our, you know, uh, being innovative, all of those things that comes from our mind is, is what makes us human. All right, yes, very valid. Like, yes, it it is. Yes, thank you, Angie. That was beautifully put. <laughs> thank you. Tim? Um, I don't... I'll, I'll put it this way. Being human is, I, I truly believe not about being able to feel different things, but to be aware and cognizant of all of it. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to just tie things back to art, but like the, 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 the being in a space where you under like you can process simple feeling happy or sad or whatever and step back and see why why is all why we feel this that and the third like not to 
make it a, a lecture or anything, but and then literally take all of that and transform it into the gallery we have right now. Like all of it, all of it comes from very deep, passionate places, and to be able to articulate that is what I really do think makes us human. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Good job. Eddie Lopez, hello. How are you feeling? How are you, are you feeling human? Would you like to explain how human you feel? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to feel human, I think, is just to be able to experience everything, you know, like through your senses, just being able to see the world, take it in, and just, I don't know, just let it out through art, let it out through yourself, you know. I think, like, you see animals and other things that are alive and moving but they're not able to express themselves but really i mean maybe they are to each other i mean you could hear birds chirping and dogs barking at each other you know i'm sure dolphins and all those animals you know they're able to talk to each other but like being a human like you're able to communicate through a lot more things you know through music through art through dance through acting you know and i think that that to me is being human to be able to express how you feel in more ways than one and to have others appreciate it too and have others be inspired by it. I think that's what being human is to me and also being empathetic, putting yourself in other people's shoes because, you know, I don't know how other, how other creatures or how other beings are, but I think being human sometimes is just being able to put yourself in someone else's position and be like, you know, that, that could be me, you know, or that's, you know, seeing it from a different view of not just all about yourself, but seeing it, seeing everybody as a whole. Yeah, yeah, that was lovely. I really agree with the point on empathy because I was going to say that being human is not like you, being human is being able to feel, but it's feeling everything. Um, it's being able to feel, fish can, you know, fish can't feel pain, but they can feel touch. Cats feel pain, but they can't, I don't know if they can feel love. I'm not a cat, but um, being a human is feeling all of that. Feeling, I know me personally, I feel the weight of everything everyone else feels all of the time. So much that like when things do get hectic, I have to take a step back and just reel myself in and make and and just shut myself off so that I don't lose it. It's on me. Yeah, you me. Um, I guess for me, um, in finding what it means to be human, I had to find what it didn't mean, um, first, and in that, I guess in my experience going through school, um. I was all, I was like typical honors straight A kid, and so I thought that was you know just life. And I, I guess I carried that same attitude into college. And I was like, okay, you are defined by what your quote unquote value is to the world. How much, how much work you're doing, how much, uh, what are you providing to the world? What are you showing? What are you doing? And that was a mindset I had for a long time that I had to destroy. I had to absolutely get rid of that mindset. And I had to learn that it is okay to just be a, a person it's okay to just to be you you're not defined by anything monetary anything materialistic you are defined by the thoughts and the actions that you have oh and the most important thing the way you treat others uh i'll never forget my mom said to me when i was younger and she she said all we have is each other um and that just means the people around you like your, your friends your loved ones your family just Man, uh, that's really all you have. Um, and so I, I find it very important to make sure that you uh, you take care of those relationships, you treat those relationships with like the same care that you treat yourself with. And that's, to me, that's what it means to be human. Yes, I agree. That was excellent. Okay. So um, now that we've all unwrapped our feelings and unwrapped how we felt, um, I want to know, how do you all care for you? So I know we're in a time where things are very uncertain. I know that we're in a time where a lot of people are struggling with their mental health. How do you, you know, self-care? How do you treat yourself? 
Angie. So, so the way uh, that I treat myself, I've you know, you know, of course during all the craziness of pandemic, but even before then, you know, of, you know, just having feelings of depression or any type of negative feelings go through. Uh, my art has always been my, you know, my safe place. So I will also go to my studio and create. But you know, especially during like the quarantine and everything. Um, you know, where, you know, none of us have been through a pandemic before and it was just so weird having all of this death around you, you know, just every time you turn on the news, there's just numbers going up and these are people dying. So to me, I, I know a lot of artists got real productive during the quarantine, during the quarantine, but I was like quite opposite. I just couldn't, I just mentally couldn't do it. You know, I was just like, you know, in a state that I wasn't feeling didn't want to leave the room. So I found some self-care that actually been helping. I'm, I'm in the grad program, MFA program here at NIU. And, you know, they offer uh, therapy and counseling sessions. So I, I, you know, it was part of tuition. So I said, why not? I'll try it out. And I've been talking to, you know, a therapist and it's actually helped a lot, you know, helped me to figure out things I didn't even know I was feeling. And two, you know, I'm going to, get um i'm gonna get a, a, a pet because a, a, i'm getting an emotional support animal i'm getting a little cat so like those have really kind of rejuvenated me and now you know been back in the studio and working like i usually have so you briefly mentioned um something that was a little tied to um stigma do you feel that as an artist of color you know, mental health stigma has forced you, has has forced you to move a certain way about your own mental health. Uh, about the mental health stigma, yeah. Because honestly, I do think that a lot of people kind of think that, you know, mental health is not that big of a deal. Like, it's like, okay, if you're, I've, like talking to family members and stuff like that, and they say, Oh, you're just feeling bad, you know, you'll be okay tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go like, like to me, they don't think it's not that they don't think it's that big of a deal. But, you know, like when I when I said earlier about how I'm with my art and I'm really into, you know, thinking about how the people are feeling and the emotions are tied to it, I think mental health is extremely important. And, you know, I do, you know, highly recommend to anyone, you know, if you're not able to, you know, work things out with yourself, you know, either with scripture, you know, if you're a Christian or whatever it is, I do recommend, you know, talking to a therapist because like those type, that really helps, I feel like, you know. I agree. Okay. Uh, hi, welcome back, guys. Tim, how do you care for yourself? Thank you, Angie, by the way. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Oh no, you're muted, unmute. Hello? Can you all hear me? Everyone else is muted. All right, but anyway, um, I don't, I don't, not to bring things into a darker side, but um, how I care for, about, how I care for myself really depends on how depressed or not I am to, like, to be matter of fact when things get darker I kind of lose the energy to do much of anything it's it's like the physical uh, imagery of ooh, really honking your horn <laughs> I'm sorry give me a second to slow that down a little bit <laughs> but um I'm sorry, I almost lost my place. No, but in, in those times, um, it's it's like being unsaturated. Like I have those feelings and I have the drive to do things, but not enough to actually carry them out. And uh, when I realize things like that, the, the best way I try to care for myself is to go outside, like just to be in the sunlight under a tree somewhere or like on my skateboard if I have the, like the chance to, if it's not too cold or anything like that. Those two things 
for me pull some color back into like a very muddy feeling that I fall into. Yeah. Did you wanna? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll give my, uh, my cliche answer first, I suppose. Um, the, mo the simplest way I take care of myself is just by doing things I wanna do. Um, if that comes in the form of playing my PlayStation for a few more hours than I probably should, then it just comes in that form. If it comes in the form of me going to the mall and cashing out on some shoes, that's that's the form it comes in. You, know, you, gotta, you gotta take care of yourself sometimes. And um, I think we as a society definitely demonize self-care and treat yourself way too much. Um, of course, be smart with it. Um, don't spend your last dollar on something yeah. to take care of yourself. But, uh, you know, um, but I guess the more like psychological answer I have is I quite literally will ask myself, how am I feeling about this? How, why, why am I responding to this in this way? Um, what, like, I, I reflect on things and, you know, conversations and I say, what could I have said different? How could I have made this go, you know, a more positive way? Um, and I find that to always be very therapeutic for me, just, you know, that psycho, that psychoanalysis and just making sure I'm always on top of, make sure, making sure I know how I feel. If no one, no one else is gonna know how you feel besides you, and half the time we don't even know why we feel the way we feel. So you gotta get to know yourself, and that is the biggest self care thing I do for myself. Well, now I feel like my answer is gonna suck. Um. Like, oh, that, you reminded me. What's up? That uh, what the best thing to do is like letting letting yourself like feel it all like to like open yes. like the faucet on all of your feelings yes to be able to even process what's going on but like, why do you feel that way like you never know you never you never even get yourself a chance to actually go through the emotion of it you never asked yourself exactly <laughs> yeah i would say that i am still i'm going through the process of learning how to care for myself better being a person who was raised to be very self-sufficient and to kind of just keep keep pushing through whatever is happening and to not really worry too much about how sad I am or how angry I am and to just compartmentalize that. I'm trying to unlearn all these things, all these very just negative ways to intake information and intake your own feelings. I'm trying to unlearn these things so that I can output a lot more positivity because I find that when I'm not taking care of myself, I can't take care of anybody else. And, you know, being a curator, part of that word does mean to care for people. Like when we were, when I was curating this exhibition, I was going through it. I was having a very rough time. And I found at points that I had to just take a hiatus because my brain just couldn't handle having to worry about making sure everyone's art is presented the way I want it to be presented and the way they want to be presented because I couldn't even focus on like presenting myself the way I want it to be, you know? To bring our relationship into it, I suppose, but I do oftentimes have to remind you like, slow down, just, you know, yeah, like, look, yeah. look around, just like, yeah. look at where you're at, you know, just yeah, yeah. assess the situation, yeah. take it slower. Yeah, like you said, you can't take care of anybody else if you can't take care of yourself. No. It's just never going to happen. Yeah. All right. So um, the next question is, and this might be a very loaded question too, um, discuss the impact of, you know, COVID-19 on your creative process. Um, I know there's a lot of people who might be viewing this or who might see this later who are creatives and they're trying to navigate this really closed off world. Um, they feel the need to create things. They feel the need to push out a lot of content because what else could you be doing right now? But how did it impact your creative process, Angie?
I'm sorry, I don't think I can hear you. Unmute, Angie, unmute. Okay, y'all can hear me? Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, like I had said earlier, first, um, the, the pandemic and the quarantine and everything slowed me down a lot because uh, just going through this depressed feeling, like I just didn't, didn't have the will to do anything like I, I once did. But um, once I started being able to cope with that and I got back into the studio, the, my work in general, um, I always like to focus on current events, you know, and obviously this is one crazy current event going on, or like COVID-19. So, um, so I was able, you know, to, to make more work uh, surrounded, about, surrounded about that. But COVID has... Um, I don't know. It also, it also gave me, helped made me realize, you know, even though we already knew it, that tomorrow is in promise, it just really kind of pushed that in your face even more for me. So to me, it, once I got over that feeling of being depressed and not being able to work, I was now more determined, like, okay, if I want this art career to, to do, to be on the level that I wanted, you know, COVID, it showed us that tomorrow's not promised. So it's like, go hard now, you know? So to me, I've just been working more and trying to really get my name out there. Right. Sam? Honestly, the entire quarantine has, um, like I can imagine for a lot of people, slowed me down. Uh, and the way that really manifests in art is I'm, I'm a person that gets very gung ho on like 16 things at once. And I want to do them all. But as you can imagine, the, the level of finesse and like precision, you do, you do that to everything. If you're trying to cover a thousand planes, it doesn't really come out to great, whatever, right? So just not having my hands on my camera or access to literal people to photograph, I've been like with me, my computer, and what I already have, like almost like stock stuff, like old photo shoots that I never really done anything with. And just really going over myself and how I've grown and all that. And also, as time has gone past, so it's like the decay of my mood or whatever. Like I've been normal, like everyone's getting more and more depressed as, as, as we're in quarantine. But that's why I want to open up like the floodgates of my feelings and really figure out what's going on with the, the text piece. Like I just want to really put that out there and the other one was just literally a photograph I took maybe three years ago I wanted to create something new and fresh that actually made me proud of them it's been a roller coaster <laughs> it's, are you on mute? No, sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tim, I'm glad you mentioned the the thing about um, COVID causing people to, you know, uh, slow down. Um, because funny enough, I felt like that was a speed that I was kind of at all my life. Um, I don't know. My grandma always said that I was the type of kid who always had his head in the clouds. Um, I'm very spacey. I zone out a lot. I uh, I'm a, I live in my head, and um, I guess. Um, Seeing, seeing what the pandemic did to other people in terms of having them slow down to almost the same speed I, I just was naturally at, it it made for a lot of interesting um, dialogue. yeah dialogue and dynamics um, with me and you. I mean, uh, Tim, with me and you, um, I know when we were quarantined together um, at that apartment, um, I think I got to know you a, a lot more than I, you know, than I used to when we were just like acquaintances. Mm -hmm. And being in that type of situation, I can now say like, like we're friends. Like you're my, <laughs> you're my boy. But um, 
Yeah, I just, I like how that, I mean, yeah, it just opened people up to, it just forced you to like not focus so much on, you know, the stuff going on around you. And then just like actually look at the person that you're in the same room with you, you, you feel me? Yeah. Um, and so I think that was, that definitely impacted my creative process when it comes to writing dialogue and, you know, just assessing people's emotional states. Um, just, yeah, it just taught me to be more uh, vulnerable and to like not be ashamed of anything that I may feel because your feelings are all you have. Yeah. And they're always, they're valid. They're mostly valid. They're most, no. <laughs> your feelings are all valid. <laughs> Mostly. No, they're valid. Yeah. Um, your feelings are completely valid. Oh, man. Um, but to the point of slowing down, um, like Chris said, um, us three, we had the opportunity and we had the fortune of being in a house full of creators when we got blocked in for quarantine. Um, so, um, I would say that COVID-19 definitely didn't hinder my creative process. If anything, it completely, what it did was it, it, it made me come to a hard stop and it forced me to question why I felt the need to do everything all the time. Um, and in doing that, it, it actually, I would say, took me back to being a child. It took me back to a time where I didn't have any responsibilities and I was just free to make things and to just let my mind run free. I would say that it actually has helped me make some of the best art I've made since I was probably eight. Um, so that's excellent. Um, so the next question I have for you guys is, we're all artists of color here on this Zoom call. so. What, and you know, actually, let me rephrase that. We're, we're all artists of color here. So we've, we're either aware of the stigma that comes along with that in this community or we've experienced it somehow. Um, so what resources do you feel should be available for, you know, people who would be considered under-resourced in terms of mental health? I'm back. Sorry. Angie, can you unmute for me? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh. um, resources available that should be available. Um, I definitely think there, you know, there should be, well, one, you know, that people could have resources in their church, you know, if they're a religious person, there should be like some type of community um, you know, counseling services that some people can talk to, you know, because not everyone can afford a therapist, like, let's just be for real, but there should be some type of, you know, um, counseling that should be available for everyone. Um, and then, I, you know, maybe even some type of, you know, if people, because to me, art is a release, you know, when it helps you not to focus on negative things that might be around you and just like to, you know, relax your brain and create. You know, a lot of people might not have resources to art materials. Maybe there was some type of community center where they could just go and create and not have to think about stuff, you know, all the other stuff craziness going on. So, yeah. Hey, Tim. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I've, I've given this same question a lot of thought, uh, just in my own personal life, but truthfully speaking, I don't know an answer that um, really works for like a community of people. Um, I, I would love to say that um, if we all can get therapists and work on our issues, then like that would save a lot. And it would, but realistically, how would that even be implemented? Implemented. Um, so it's just, it's, it's really, it's a balancing act that I don't really know how to tackle. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we need to help because truthfully speaking, I don't know what I need right now to help myself. I 
understand. I understand. Oh man. Okay. Um, Eddie, did you want to chime in? So, what was your what was the question again? I'm sorry. Oh no problem. Uh, what resources do you feel should be available for people who need assistance with their mental health and they don't have access or access to it? Or are there any resources that you you know are aware of that you could put out there into the world for us? I think just people more, uh, just being more of a community, more like just being more open and you know being able to talk about how they feel and what's going on in their head without having to feel judged or any type of negative, you know, feelings. Because a lot of people, you know, won't say things or won't express themselves because sometimes they feel like, oh, they might be, people categorize you, put you in a group, be like, oh, he's that type of person or he, she's that type of person or, you know, they might do this or they might do that. But, you know, being more open and feeling comfortable around who you're with, I guess more, more type of a, more type of yeah community community people in the neighborhood who would be just more more willing to talk to each other and more open i think that would help out a lot for a lot of people because a lot of people older or younger sometimes too you know like myself i'm not i'm not that big on uh i don't know like going out and like you know i really keep to myself a lot so you know having a group of people, sometimes even strangers that you're able to talk to and express yourself to and know that they're not going to judge you or try to be like, oh, well, you know, this or that about that person really helps a lot, you know, kind of like a therapist, but, you know, someone you don't have to pay, you know. <laughs> that. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with that completely. I think um, I think it starts with you as an individual. Um, you oftentimes you're gonna get what you put out into the world. So if you if you meet situations and you approach them with understanding and kindness, you're more than likely gonna get that back. Um, and I, I just really think that it's imperative that we all operate as each other's resources. I know, um, and Tim, you might be able to, you know, not might, you definitely can identify with this being like a black male. Um, it is not the most, you know, acceptable thing for us not to a deal point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not I mean, any male really, but right, like yeah. especially, oh my goodness. Um men of color, you guys don't get to be we don't get to be sad. Um <laughs> even, uh, like growing up, I I mean quite recently I actually had like a dialogue with my dad where I was just like, man, I, you know, I, I feel stuff. I, I I think I'm allowed to do that. I, I you know I I cry. I cry a lot. I think I cried last night. I did. <laughs> and that's okay. That, yeah. that, is, that is okay. Um, I've always admired how candidly you speak about your emotions. Oh, because I don't care. Who am I? I know. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who the hell am I? Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just offering understanding, being each other's resources, being each other's therapist. That's a dangerous thing because not all of us have psychology degrees. So don't think you're official, but do your best, yeah. you know? You know, just, it's it's good to be there for one another. Yes, like Chris said, you, you and your community and your family and your friends and the people you care about can be one of the best resources for you, you know, when you don't have access to a therapist. Um, another resource that I know of at least is um, a nonprofit called stigmas where they give you know forums they give information about mental health they find you know low-cost therapy for people it's a really wonderful foundation that they have here in Chicago um for anybody who might need that resource um so uh I know this is a really heavy topic sorry guys <laughs> sorry I really appreciate um you know, I didn't really want this to form itself as a very formal artist talk. I wanted this to be just us talking about, you know, something that is um, intrinsic to all human beings, just talking about feelings, something that we really just don't talk about enough. If more people were just more candid about how they felt, a lot more progress could be made in the world. And if more people were more candid, they could love themselves more and subsequently we could love each other more. This could be a better place. Um, but 
Thank you all so much. Eddie, thank you. Tim, thank you. Angie, thank you so much. Um, no, thank, you. thank you. You were here, though. <laughs> you were already here. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we had two of our artists who couldn't come today because they had to, you know, just take care of things outside of CoPro. It happens. Um, so honorable mention and honorable shout out to Miss Yvette Lara. Um, for her really awesome work in the exhibition. I know she wanted to be here. She didn't get the chance to be. Um, and Isaiah Uribe as well. I know he is also, he's a student, so he didn't get a chance to make it here today. Um, but thank them for putting their work in the exhibition and for contributing to something as helpful as a show like this. Um, I'd really like to thank you all again for just putting your feelings into your work so that other people might have something that they can now view and understand. You know, thank you guys. I don't want y'all to cry or anything, but thank you. <laughs> thank you too. <laughs> no one do it. Hey guys, wait, we're at the MCA. We can't do that yet. I'll cry right now. <laughs> I'll cry right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. And uh, I'm going to be talking to y'all later. So. I'll see y'all in the next few days to come de install. And you guys have a good day. You too. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.